Hurricane Melissa is officially the third strongest hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic. Good morning, I'm Mirage Disputes, October 28, 2025, and the hurricane aircraft AF-303 at around 13Z, or that's 9 a.m. Eastern Time, has recorded a pressure of 892 hectopascals or millibars. In comparison, the strongest ever hurricane recorded in the Atlantic was Hurricane Wilma in 2005 with 888 millibars. And as I'm recording this video at around 9 a.m. Central Time, Melissa unfortunately still continues to strengthen at 180 miles per hour sustained winds and is just about to hit Jamaica. So it really is a worst case scenario becoming reality with one of the strongest hurricanes hitting Jamaica in this moment still bringing around 30 to 40 inches of rain and because most of the islands on the east side of the hurricane we're definitely going to see a lot of torrential rain, mudslides, landslides, and even tornadoes. Hurricane Melissa is still on track to head to the northeast into eastern Cuba still as a category four and then into the Bahamas maybe as a category one or category two. With that being said even though they're not directly in the path places like Haiti and Dominican Republic are still going to get continuous amount of rain and so landslides mudslides are all still very much possible for the next few days so if we take a look at the bigger picture at 500 millibars and midway the troposphere we have that trough that has been deepening in the states and has been pursuing to the southeast and this is why melissa is now pursuing to the northeast because it's providing a lot of southwesterly flow and actually if we go to the states we have an upper level low pressure that's starting to develop and starting to deepen this trough even more and we have a ton of wind speed aloft going from the northern rockies all the way down to the southern plains and what that's going to do it's going to be bringing northwesterly winds bringing in that cool air down so if we go down to the surface places like the plains have already been seeing a lot of showers and this is pretty much going to continue on eastward as we're going to have a cold front going all the way from the mississippi valley all the way down to the southern plains and with this upper level low pressure developing somewhere around the central plains and headed southeastward we're going to see a surface low pressure somewhere develop around this vicinity as well and so with low pressures being counterclockwise flow we're going to see some subtly moisture being evicted into places like the mississippi valley and then eventually the ohio valley and so those in the midwest around the mississippi valley you guys can pretty much expect showers pretty much all day and then eventually for the Ohio Valley during the night into next morning and so the other side is low pressure with that counterclockwise flow it's bringing in that northwesterly winds bringing in that cool dry air which is why we're going to see a really strong cold front going from northern Texas to Louisiana and so with that we're going to see a long band of strong thunderstorms and we're going to see these thunderstorms form around 1 to 2 p.m central time and then travel southeastward and with these thunderstorms pretty much all hazards are on the wrist but isolated we're going to see a two percent chance for an isolated tornado tornado, winds up to 60 miles per hour, and maybe large hail. Last thing I want to point out, looking at California at 500 millibars, it is in the center of a ridge. And with that, we're going to have an upper level high pressure. And with high pressures, that's sinking air, but we also have a lot of relatively dry air aloft as well going down. So around the Los Angeles area, around the mountains, we're going to have relative humidities around 15% or lower. And we're going to see surface sustained wind speeds from 15 to 20 miles per hour. So this may be susceptible for fire.